Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome back to Funnel Trade. So it looks like more and more we are going to be getting serialized cards in Magic the Gathering finally. Baseball cards have been doing this for almost two decades now. Very, very short runs of uniquely serialized cards. So what you might see is something like, let's say, a reprint of Lightning Bolt with a very unique artwork, and they might print 50 copies of it, and every single copy would have a unique foil stamp on it that would say 1 of 50, or 2 of 50, or 3 of 50, on up to 50 of 50. And so there would only be 50 examples of this lightning bolt variation in existence with this unique artwork. That's how these serialized cards work. And the, the rumors have been coming out for quite a while that we're getting these in 2022 in Magic, and... There's something to realize about this that's really interesting and I think important and very good for the game and the hobby, for collectability, for investability, and for playability. It's that serialized cards are a de facto continuation of the reserve list. And it, it doesn't really matter what you think of the reserve list. Um, you know, Mark Rosewater himself has said he doesn't like it, he wishes it was gone, but he he's also said... Learn to live with it because it's not going anywhere. Accept it, move on with your life, and try to be happy. So, you know, that's the reality of the, the reserve list, no matter what you think. Um, but the, the way that serialized cards will add to this is really interesting. They obviously will never call it the reserve list because that's too divisive. And so instead, it will function just like it in the sense that these unique artworks, these unique treatments of the cards, these variations that have unique serial numbers on them and that are only printed in very small quantities will never be reprinted. And so I always like to give the example when I talk about cards that are unlikely to be reprinted. The two that I always talk about, one I just happen to have here, is Crusade, because it's one of the Hurt Feelings cards of 2020. Um, probably will never be reprinted, but it could be. It's more likely to be reprinted than the reserve list is. But uh, the, the other one that I use as an example in a lot of my videos, just because I think it's a, a cool-looking card, is the Japanese variation Demonic Tutor from the Mystical Archives in Strixhaven. And that's a unique artwork, a, a uh, not a unique treatment because now Kamigawa has Japanese variation cards also, but it, it, it's a very uh, interesting and probably unique variation of Demonic Tutor that will probably never be reprinted, though you can't guarantee it. And so the interesting thing is serialized cards will go even better than that they will go into truly reserve list category, territory where they will not be reprinted. That's why they are serialized. And so the great thing about this, the several fold, is that first, when that ideal young new player who first comes to Magic goes and he buys some cards, let's say he pulls one of these serialized cards. Well, that's really fun and interesting for him, first off. But second off, he realizes, hey, this is something of value. This is something that is maybe worth a significant percentage or possibly even more than the cost of what he spent on Magic. And it certainly helps to keep the value of his collection at least somewhat closer to the money he has spent. Because there's nothing that will sink a card game faster then if people are told, hey, you want to come blow a bunch of money on this card game and immediately the cards you buy are worth nothing, people don't get very enthused about that. Even if they just want to come in as players, they want to have the reassurance that should they decide at some point they just don't enjoy the game anymore, they want to move on to different hobbies, they can liquidate what they've bought and get some percentage of it back. And so things like the reserve list and now serialized cards do that. They, they support their own valuations through their rarity and their exclusivity and basically the demand that will create for them among collectors and investors. And so it's part of that symbiotic triangle between players, collectors, and investors that all work together to hold up the popularity of the game and keep players coming into it and keep players in it once they're there. So 
that's the first thing. Um, the, the second interesting thing is that if executed correctly, this will be even better than the reserve list. See, the problem with the reserve list was when it went into effect, when it was first created in the mid nineties, it, it was a cutoff of printing any variation of that card. And so you may have something like Grim Monolith, where lots of decks love it. It is an incredibly powerful and popular card, but nope, it's not getting reprinted in any variation. Even if they were, if Watsi was to say, look, we'll just print a ugly looking black and white sketch version of it. And I know some people love those sketch version cards, but you know, if Watsi was to say, we will just print something that's so awfully ugly that it, it can't threaten the value of these old cards in any possible way, um, they still can't do that. But if they do these serialized cards correctly and they simply make them ultra rare variations of cards that are printed in different, more common variations within the same expansion, then you allow players to still have access to the card and you allow the collectors and investors to have ultra rare chase cards to go after. And really that's how WotC needs to execute these things in order to keep those three groups balanced, keep them working together to, to, towards the longevity of the game. And so the worst thing you can do is like uh, cards like Ragavan from Modern Horizons 2, where it very quickly became a staple card that you must have four of in every modern deck, but also the card was 80 or $90. And so to be competitive, you were going to have to spend nearly $400 on four copies of Ragavan to, to remain relevant in your play circle. But if you do it correctly with these serialized cards, they can be rare, they can be sought after, they can be unique, they can be essentially in everything but name, they can be the new reserve list, but they can also be accessible through other variations of the same card that have different artwork, different treatments, etc. And so Wasi really has an opportunity here to please everybody, to do something really great for the game if they execute it correctly. The problem will be if they create ultra high powered cards that are also ultra rare. And then you end up in a situation where if you want to be competitive at a very high level in tournament magic play, you have to buy one of these eight or 10 or $15,000 cards, then it's a total bust and they screwed it up. So we'll see what they end up doing with it. I'm optimistic. I hope they get it right. I hope that, you know, Mark Rosewater's uh, dislike of the reserve list can steer them in the right direction, that at least he can be a, a rudder on the boat, getting them in the right direction, even if he may not have enough power in all the right places within the company to make the decisions. But hopefully it'll go the right way and everybody can benefit from this. I'm really optimistic for it. And if you end up, whatever whatever expansion they, they first release these in, if you end up pulling one, uh, don't trade it away. Uh, hold it for a while, because one of the interesting side effects of uniquely serialized cards that we see in the sports card world is when you get down to the crazy ones that are one of 25, one of 20, one of 10, one of five, and then there's ones that are one of one. Um, it, it makes for a very low volume market and so price discovery is very difficult and a lot of the times cards like that will have to go to auction to get good price discovery so if you pull something like that hold on to it be patient don't get too excited and just trade it right back to the guy behind the counter for a, a box of more cards to to crack so let me know what you think um let me know what you think about the reserve list that's a can of worms but you know i think I think it did a good job doing what it needed to do in the early days. I think it doesn't really accomplish that anymore now, but I also think it should not have been closed. I think that over the years, a few cards from every set should have been added to the reserve list, and then the entire list would look a lot different today than it does, and the effect it has on the game would be a lot different, and I think attitudes around it would be a lot different too. So curious to know what you think, what you think about serialized cards coming out. Um, click on some of these videos popping up to the side here now. And if you like this kind of content, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and join me on Final Trade. Thanks a lot.